Hello everyone. I'm going to try to give you a real quick tutorial on GoFormative. This is the third time I've done it and the first two times I either said something wrong or it got really long. So I'm going to keep this one short. I'm going to keep it concise. If you have further questions, please let me know. Uh, so I'm already logged into GoFormative. You can log in using Google, which is great. It's one less password to have to remember. Uh, it is under a free trial right now, so there are some features in premium that I cannot access, but I'll show you the ones that I can access. What I think is great about GoFormative is I can upload a PDF, so a worksheet right from our curriculum or maybe a worksheet students already have, and then students can either answer questions or submit answers through GoFormative instead of having to turn in a worksheet, which right now with our online learning, students are not able to turn in physical worksheets to me. So I, it's a couple quick things that I really like about it. First of all, woohoo, you can upload Google Classroom. You can import all your students right from there. They don't need to enter code. You don't need to enter their email. You get all the kids in right away. Uh, what's great about this is once you have them imported into GoFormative. If you post a link to one of your GoFormatives, all they have to do is sign in with Google. I did this with two classes already, and I only had one student out of about 40 who said they didn't understand what to do, and then they admitted that they had not read the directions. So for students, it's really easy to get into. So love that I can import from Google. Now, looking at one of the GoFormatives, so this is a PDF from our curriculum. You can upload 20 PDFs a month, uh, which is great. May or may not be enough. I don't know. I haven't fully decided how I'm going to use it. But now on this document, I can add in a lot of features. So if I click anywhere, it's going to get that plus sign. All these little ones with stars are premium. I cannot use those, but I can use any of the other ones. So let's say I want to start off with a video. I can add a video at the beginning of assignment. I already have a YouTube link copied, so I'm gonna paste that in here so they can start off right away with maybe a how-to video that will help them. This is a, an assignment on tape diagrams, so I found a video on tape diagrams. From there, I can just add questions. Now, on a math worksheet, I'm gonna add the questions that are on the worksheet and give the students the ability to submit their answers. Now, if this was language arts or a reading passage, you could add in comprehension questions kind of throughout uh, whatever you want. Now, it doesn't matter where you kind of click and add on the page because you can always move it later. Uh, they do show up in order over here on the right side as well. Uh, so they have multiple choice. They have short answer. Um, you can add point values to all these. Let's say I add a short answer example question. And let's pretend that it was the correct answer is going to be 30 yards. Well, here's the thing. Students don't always type things correctly. This could be 30 yards like this. May, oh, not like that. <laughs> 30 yards wide, yes. Um, sometimes students don't add in labels. Sometimes they add more. It's okay. You can add as many short answers as you want. If a student types it one of those ways, it will mark it correct. Let's say they write you a sentence back to give you their answer, and which I didn't do. It will initially mark it wrong, but you can always go back and give them that point. I can change the point value. Let's say I want to make this a two-point question. I can do that right here. And again, I always include in my directions to students that um, I didn't mean to click that. I'm sorry. Um, I always tell my students that I will be checking over their assignment and I will make sure that and all the correct points are given for correct answers. So if they type it differently, but it is the correct answer, I am able to go back in and give them those points as well. Um, some other noteworthy things here in GoFormative would be the whiteboard or the show your work. Um, so whiteboard is an easy way for you to give an example where you can kind of draw it out. Show your work is a great way for kids to show their work to write it out. So if I add a show your work question, it's going to look like this. I can type the question is, what is Miss Marcuson's favorite dessert? Um, the kids all know this is brownies because everything in my classroom is brownies. And I can come in here, they can text, they can include image, they can draw. There's all sorts of options. Um, so if they were just writing it in. It's not a bad writing interface. I do have a mouse right now. Um, 
but we can have student submit done. I will be able to view. Now, if they were working out a math problem, I could see their work here. Um, they could type something into that as well. So if you wanted them to type a response, that is an option instead of handwriting it. I'd probably include that in the directions. Um, so otherwise, you can kind of look through, um, you know, multiple choice questions, short answers, essays, true or false. You can add any of those types of questions. And then when you're all done, you just click assign. And then I can just pick the Google Classroom that I want to assign this into. I might just click for my practice class, assign and post to Google. It's going to automatically do it right there. And I'm done. It's assigned. Okay, it's short, sweet, and easy. Um, let me know if you have any questions.